Hey, I'm Roland with Mobile Geeks, and right here we have the LG G Watch. So that's the first Android Wear based smartwatch that's coming to market pretty soon. It's going to be uh, starting to be delivered from Google Play at the, on the 4th of July, I think. And right now they've already given these out to Google I.O. attendees. We were pretty lucky to get a preview device from LG Germany. So here we have it. That's the first Android Wear smartwatch. Samsung is also putting the Gear Live into the market pretty soon, but that's only starting to be delivered a bit later, at least in Germany it is. It starts, uh, they start shipping on the 8th of July in this case. So the smartwatch is basically uh, designed in a way that has been known from a bunch of other smartwatch devices that have already been available for a while. So it has a square display. This one is a 1.65 inch uh, IPS panel that has a resolution of 280 by 280 pixels. It stays turned on all the time, but it dims, so you can always see the time. But you can also set it to shut off uh, when you don't use the screen. You just tap it uh, once and it will turn on the screen or brighten the screen again. Or if you've turned it off, turn it back on again. Uh, there's also a gyro in here that lets the watch know when you move the arm uh, in a certain angle and that will turn on or turn up the screen brightness. It tends to shut, out, shut down pretty fast to uh, probably preserve battery life, but that's also necessary, I guess, because we only have a 400 milliamp hour battery in here that's uh, powering a quad core, or we don't even know what how many cores it has, but I guess it's a quad core, but my, I can't really imagine it running 1.2 gigahertz quad core CU SOC. So this thing definitely runs at 1.2 gigahertz, or that's the maximum frequency. But it is a Snapdragon 400 from Qualcomm. We don't know the core count yet, so that's up to speculation. There's 512 megabytes of RAM in here and 4 gigs of flash storage. The whole thing weighs in at 65 grams and it's 9.95 millimeters thick. It has this pretty glossy bezel, bezel on top that's a cover made out of uh, Gorilla Glass 3. The rest or the bottom of the design is made from uh, stainless steel. It does look pretty good and it's made in this matte look. Uh, the stainless steel is here covered with some PVC coating or something like that. We have a standard 22 millimeter uh, wristband which you can exchange as much as you like if you are able to buy yourself or you just go to a local jeweler that can take care of that. I've already made an appointment so I will have probably a metal wristband attached to this device on Monday. Today is Saturday so it's gonna take a bit but we'll keep you updated on that. Um, well I was told that uh, there might be a little too smalls or the spacing between the wristband and the watch case itself might be too little to actually put on a metal wristband but we'll see how that actually works out. Um, as you can see down here you have a small mic and that is because you can use the smartwatch by talking to it so there's a speech recognition integrated and yeah no buttons at all except or not except but the only thing that is visible on the casing are those five golden pins right here. So that's where the watch connects to the charging cradle that sits down here. That also has those five pins. It's connected just through a standard micro USB cable to, in this case, my laptop to actually charge the watch. And if you put it on here, it's actually snapping to it because the whole base right here, the cradle is actually magnetic and that will definitely stick to the watch pretty nicely. It is a decent way to charge the device, but uh, I think Sony only has the only company right now that actually has a smartwatch with an integrated micro USB port that you can charge directly without any cradles or wireless charging or whatever. On the right side right here we have the LG G3 that is my smartphone right now. That is running the Android Wear app which is kind of hard to get right now if you're not at Google I.O. or if you haven't been at Google I.O. because uh, they put it on Play Store and they removed it and I had to get hold of it from somebody's G Drive that uploaded it from I.O. actually. Um, what it does is 
it has pretty rudimentary uh, functions right now. So it only allows you to set what apps you want to put on the phone or not what you, what you want to put on the phone, but which apps you want to be able to control by voice. In my case, or in Germany at least, it's only the stopwatch, calendar, timer, uh, and the alarm clock, and that's pretty much it. Also, the kind of Fitbit or Google Fit um, integration right here that is basically just a step counter. There's a bunch of settings up here. We can send demo cards, that's what they're calling it, to the watch itself. So if you tap right here, there will be some uh, notifications showing up that is just for demo purposes, and that's basically all the app does right now. So I will get myself set up, and then I'll show you around the Android Wear software on, this, on the smartwatch, and we'll see how all that works. So here is Android Wear on the LG G Watch, all set up now. And if you tap right there, you'd basically wake up the watch. You also have the option to keep it in sleep mode. There is a sleep mode option where you can actually deactivate the screen. So you have to tap to activate and either it turns on the screen and goes up to full brightness or it just pushes to full brightness. And if you tap again, there up comes this uh, menu for Google uh, Google Now right, right here. That's also doubling as the search engine. So if you just go right here, what's the weather like in Berlin right now? So that's the way you search with Google Now on the G Watch right here and any other Android Wear device that you will be able to buy pretty soon. And if you've done that, up comes the weather. There's a card right here for more information on the weather this week. So let's do a real search now. I'm just going to deactivate this and tap again. Just once more. Where's Costa Rica? So obviously you're able to search for places on maps too, just by talking to the phone right there, or the watch is talking to the phone and it will push those results back to you. You can always open this up on the phone, that's why this little, little icon on there is. That's pretty much all there is right now if you're searching for places using that Google Now function right there. But let's get back to the home screen and I'll walk you through the device itself. Up here you can see that right now I have deactivated notifications. So if I pull down again, I'll activate that again, and up comes my uh, Google Plus in this case. We have a bunch of new notifications in here. tells you about all those new things that happened there. Um, you can always push further down. So we have two Skype messages. That's up here as actually German right now because I switched the language on my phone to English from German to do this video, and an interestingly, interestingly, accordingly, the watch switches its language too, so that's pretty interesting right there. Here we have the step counter. I just reset the watch, so basically there hasn't been any steps recorded up to now. Let me just see. No, not really. So you have always the option to go to the right. If you swipe to the right, you'll see other options coming up. For example, the history in this case. This is the so-called step card. It's part of the Google Now experience that also, this also appears on right here on the front screen. Let's go further down. We have a bunch of stock options. In this case, Microsoft right here. Uh, and the Google uh, shares, share price. And this is, again, the weather card I told you earlier about. So you can just swipe to the right and move over here. Further down, this is a smart tip notification from the LG G3 that's connected right now. So also, pretty much any other app that produces notifications can uh, relay some cards to the uh, G Watch in this case or other Android Wear devices. And that's pretty much it. You can also receive, uh, for example, notifications from Twitter and Facebook and pretty much any other app. As I said, in a bunch of apps, you have the option to actually reply to stuff. So if I would receive an email, for example, I could actually uh, reply to the email using the voice entry on the G Watch. In German, it doesn't work th that well yet because uh, I think the language library isn't as big yet, but that might be something else there. Um, beneath that is another layer. Again, this is the Google search, but you can also just scroll up from the bottom and you'll have this list of possible voice actions, or you can just tap them 
with your hand. I need more water. And in this case, it will just set up a notification and send it to me through email. There's no actual, no actual way to look at your notifications on the watch itself yet. And let's go deeper down in that menu. So there's some reminders to be set. I can show you your steps. In this case, pulls up just this menu right there. Let's go back in here, scroll up. Showing my steps, you can send text messages. You can also reply to text messages, messages that you receive on the phone. You can even receive calls. I mean, like you can take the call, but you can't really dial calls from the watch itself. But if you have um, contact uh, recognition activated on the phone, you will actually be able to make calls if by saying, for example, call whoever contacts name, and that will pull up the contact and make you able to call them. Also, in the email, uh, mode right here you can also just answer emails and receive or write a new email by speech recognition i can set up appointments and have my agenda set right here i can also navigate so in this case i'm just going to navigate to brandenburg gate and let's see if that works navigate to brandenburg gate so it actually recognizes Brandenburg Gate, which is the main site here in Berlin, and now it's calculating the route. It's always the phone that does all the work, basically. It's all, only just pushing uh, the notification stuff and uh, some data to the smartphone in this case, and here we have my street right here, and if I had a GPS signal, I would actually have the uh, directions on here too, so that pretty much works the same. It tells me how far it is, uh, and you can exit the, that's my phone telling me in German where to go and here we have the notifications on the uh, smartphone itself even telling you which directions you have to take and there's uh, even a small counter down there counting the uh, showing you the way so that was the navigation part let's see what else we have so we have navigation, you can set timers. In this case, set timer for 50 minutes. Just pull that back up. Let's go back out here. Let's see what's, what else we have. We have the possibility to set a timer. I tried that already. I'm going to set an alarm right now. Uh, that doesn't work. You can all, uh, in some cases, you can actually do all the work with your hand. So you can just use this menu to, for example, navigate down to setting a timer or start a start watch. I'm going to set an alarm for whatever, 8 tomorrow morning. And you can also uh, do that by voice again in this case. I'm going to just tap that right here. Come on. Yep. <laughs> still wants to navigate me there. Uh, you can show alarms and you also have a menu with settings in it. So you can adjust the brightness right here. I'm just going to keep it at 3 so it doesn't overblow on the camera. Uh, you can set the screen to turn off when you don't use the watch. Otherwise it's just dimming down and shows uh, the time but there's also the, the option to really turn the screen off as I told you. You can switch to airplane mode if you're on a plane and have to turn off uh, wireless devices. You can actually power off the watch but you can't really power it on without a cradle so you have to use the power cradle to push some energy to the device to make it turn back on. So you have the option of turning it off but it doesn't turn on because there's no buttons on here or you can't hold the screen to have it turn back on. Um, once you've really turned it off, you can always restart the device. You have the option to reset the device and you can change the watch faces, which we're going to do right now, actually. And I'm just going to, let's not hope that this girl, uh, I'm just going to quit the navigation right now. Um, the way to actually switch between watch faces is either through this menu down here or you can just hold right here and then it will give you the option to switch between a bunch of different kind of there's a bunch of modern ones there's a bunch of classic kind of analog watch faces a bunch of disco style whatever you want to call that uh, 
designed uh, interfaces and I'm just going to stick with this uh, basic digital look right here. So that's another way to set up the G-Watch and I'm just going to quickly move back in here to the settings menu again and show you the about menu. Because in here you have the model number, software version, serial number and stuff and you can also search for system updates right now there's nothing new for me here and yeah so that's pretty much all you can do with the Android smartwatches or Android Wear in this case it's the LG G watch and I was rolling with mobile geeks checking out the G watch and Android Wear and if you like what we do on our channel subscribe give us a like or a thumbs up and follow us on Facebook Twitter Google Plus Visit our websites, mobilegeeks.com and mobilegeeks.de, and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.